Hi, so once again, it's time for film recommendations. And uh, I know it, it's probably like, where does this guy get off telling me what to see? And it's not so much that I'm telling you what you need to see. I'm telling you more what I like uh, simply as a means of expressing myself. And uh, in this case, uh, it's sharing something that I'm really passionate about, which is film. And... Uh, and in some cases television, uh, in a way that only YouTube would really allow me to do in, because if I were to try and get this show aired on any network, I'm pretty sure it would be off the air inside of less than a week. Uh, but anyway, so here I'm going to be starting up with a couple of uh, really cool things. One is a 1980s historical piece. Uh, and I know you're probably familiar with it. This is the director's cut of Amadeus. I was able to pick this up for not too much at the local Costco uh, back this summer. And uh, it is a long, long movie. Uh, I will not even lie. Plus side, it has some wonderful pieces written by Mozart and Salieri. Um, personally, uh, I don't like the fact that they cast uh, Salieri in such a bad light, but uh, it offers a dynamic for the storytelling. Uh, as it is, uh, it has a, an amazing cast of actors uh, surrounding uh, Tom Holch as the eponymous Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, and um, it features F. Murray Abraham as uh, Salieri, and as I mentioned before, features amazing, amazing music. Uh, as it is, the costumery and uh, spectacle of this film is beyond compare. Uh, Tom Holtz's performance, um, although memorable, gets a bit on the annoying side. Um, so I wouldn't really... Uh, recommend you watch it with the kids obviously because while yes Mozart is supposed to make people smarter uh, in this case I'm pretty sure that they that the kids would be wanting to go to bed after such a long boring movie uh, if they weren't already asleep uh, and then weren't constantly awoken by Tom Holch's performance with uh, Amadeus having this very high shrill cackle of a laugh that will just, you know, make you like, oh, no, no, don't ever, no, don't do that. Uh, but as it is, this uh, this copy of the film uh, comes with two discs and uh, full documentary, uh, full commentary, uh, I want to say, yes, full-length audio commentary uh, by uh, the director and producer. And uh, it's really an amazing piece. Uh, if you just watch it from beginning to end, it flows like a novel. So I think you'll get a lot out of it. Uh, it has won several awards, of course. Uh, eight Academy Awards, including Best Picture, right there on the cover. And uh, this is the two-disc special edition. And the thing about it being the director's cut is that it is longer. And the movie itself was already pretty long, so this is just... You know, ridiculously long, but at the same time, you get such a wonderful sense of storytelling that it's worth it if you're willing to sit through a good two and a half, three hours of movie just in order to, you know, learn a bit more about Amadeus. I'd recommend you rent it or uh, check it out from the library or borrow a copy from a friend if they have it. Just, uh, you know, to see if you really want it. Because a film like this is a bit of an investment. Uh, so hopefully you'll get a lot out of it and enjoy it. Uh, if nothing else, then just for the music. And if you really just want the music, then go buy a Mozart CD, because goodness knows there are enough of them. And, of course, the man was a very talented musician. And I recommend you also check out um, CDs with uh, compositions by Salieri and other artists of the time, because... It is called classical simply because, uh, you know, we look to this music as defining what it is to be music. And I think that the artistry in composition 
and uh, and timing and instrumentation and everything is simply incredible, all things considered. Uh, and of course Mozart being one of the big names and the best known, uh, you get an immediate sense of exactly why the music uh, of this time has lasted as long as it has. And I don't know, I think you might find it, interest, it interesting to compare it with what we consider uh, classical orchestral music today and see where the differences lie. Personally, I prefer the older stuff, but that's me. Moving on, uh, for those of you, I, I don't think I recommended this in any other video. Uh, it is uh, the complete series of Space Above and Beyond, which I picked up on Amazon for not that much. It's interesting, uh, especially for fans of Robert Heinlein's Starship Troopers, because uh, fans of Aliens will get a lot of, out of this. The movie Aliens with Sigourney Weaver and all them uh, will get a lot out of this because it has a lot of the same feel, and it is essentially about space marines. Um, and it has this wonderful, wonderful sense of just poetic justice and storyline, while at the same time having overarching stories and mysteries. The budget at times for the show got very uh, low, and you could tell. For a while, Sci-Fi Channel was showing Space Above and Beyond on its... Um, daytime programming and marathons, especially in the summer, uh, for years, I remember. And uh, it's a good show, and you can watch it, you know, but the problem is is that it's more of a weekly serial than the kind of show where you can just watch it and watch it and watch it all day long because it's each episode is very different from the other. Each episode is its own story that tells its own thing. And... Lay, looping, looping them back to back, uh, which I've done watching them, doesn't really work. Uh, as it is, they kind of went low budget on the discs. Uh, the you can see that the the cover of each thing is is it's a thin case. Um, there are no real uh, there there are no documentaries no. Um, no, no, anything. It, it's really uh, a very bare bones edition, but and uh, each disc is double sided, so you'll flip the disc in order to watch every episode. And admittedly, there's nothing wrong with that. There are multiple discs in each case, so it's very space efficient as it is. But um, it tells this amazing story of uh, these uh, five characters who are all uh, in a flight squad of marine fighter pilots who go out into space obviously and battle uh, an alien force that is threatening to wipe out all mankind and it's interesting because you just see this whole different side to humanity you see this whole different side to soldiering that could have only been told pre 9-11 because uh, now if you were to tell these stories uh, with the humanity that's drawn in to each character, you would have so many people just turning it off and saying, that's not how soldiers are, they're tough, they don't have emotions. And it's like, well, no, they have families, they have friends, they have loved ones. And uh, I think that people who really liked the unit will get a good amount out of this uh, show. Uh, it's not that expensive as television series go, uh, to buy the entire series. So I think you'll get a lot out of it. It was produced and written by uh, the same people as The X-Files um, back when that show was like Fox's number one show. So I think you should check it out. If you're a fan of The X-Files, you might like some of the touches that uh, are brought to, uh, to this one. So that's all for now. Bye-bye.